Hello, my name is Rich. I use the he, him pronouns, and you're watching my YouTube channel where I play amazing tabletop role-playing games with friends. This is Star Wars Saturdays, so named because it happens on Saturdays, and also we play in Star Wars. It's an ongoing anthology campaign uh, where each month, or sometimes for a string of months such as now, I choose a different tabletop RPG reskin it, hack it, or just say, hey, this is in Star Wars now. We are currently playing a quarterly question mark of Fellowship. Fellowship is a game from the Barry Gothica games. It is uh, built around the ideas of the Fellowship, right? The the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And also JoJo's Bizarre Adventures and other I hope I got the name of the anime right. Dang it, it's JoJo. So I'll just say JoJo so I don't screw it up. But anyway, and other travel ideas of heroic games. We've reskinned it for Star Wars. It's very uh, fun and interesting. I've also uh, combined several of the books because they all felt like they kind of fit with Star Wars. So that is what we are playing. The crew in last session were able to save a planet of uh, Varlock, and now they escaped with the stillness in tow, uh, the hopes of going on to continue to combat the Empire. We are playing in a timeline that is, uh, I literally, I didn't even, it was just, I push up my nose, my glasses up my nose because I'm doing nerdy stuff. Anyway, uh, it, it we're playing in the, Post Return of the Jedi era, not quite up to the da the the Dathomir Mandalorian, which is supposed to be five years after Return of the Jedi. So somewhere in that sweet spot, I'm pulling in some canon from the books that is not Disney official canon. In that we are using uh, the Warlord of the Empire, a guy known as Zenj. He is not as cool as Thrawn, but he's still relatively cool. And it's an Imperial Remnant. So everything can kind of nest in uh, well enough with Star Wars TV shows and the movies, if you so desire. This crew is headed towards Dathomir, which is why I jumped in to say Dathomir accidentally. And uh, they are flying in their lovely Old Republic ship known as the Diligent Spark. Love that name. Good job there. Uh, so let's quickly go around the horn for introductions, and then we will talk about the Rebellion, because there's a whole set of mechanics in the Rebellion. I'm going to let uh, – we're going we're gonna to let Cody go last. He's got some stuff he's taking care of there. So it's just – listen, with... there's dogs nearby, and they I'm not mad at you, bro. I'm, I'm not, sorry, Rich. I'm sorry. I'll go. I shouldn't, have, sorry. I shouldn't have verbalized. I was trying to let you know you could relax and take care of business. That's what I was trying to communicate. Greg, please introduce yourself and remind us about your character. Hi, I'm Greg. I use he, him pronouns. Uh, I'm playing Zop Books, my returning bounty hunter character uh, right there. Um Zop is a, a Rodian bounty hunter. Gosh, last time uh confront we confronted uh Darren about the oh that was really that was the time before. So uh shot a whole bunch of TIE fighters last time. Um it's pretty you know hero of the battle of Varlock. Um at least that's what Zop will put in, in his notes. Um yeah, and we are making our way to death. It's in his LinkedIn profile. It's got to be true. Go ahead. Yep. Damn yep. it, Rich. Exactly. I made the same joke in chat. <laughs> and uh, advocate for destroying the uh, the Dark Sith holocron that we have acquired. Even though that may not actually be what we're supposed to do with it. But yeah. I like Rodian advocacy advocacies it's, uh it's good to hear you guys advocate for things cool uh then we're gonna move slightly to the left to buddy k introduce yourself tell us about your character oh hey i'm k of the sheen they variety and i am playing darren von vorlock he him our heir uh last time he had a sort of uh battle of conscious about what to do with the triangle box thing 
and whether to uh, set it and its information free or to keep it at bay. And uh, he has decided to shoulder that burden for his people as he does not feel that they are ready and he is concerned about their safety should they become batteries for the empire. So uh, right now the triangle lives next to his heart. We're in a little baby Bjorn, which is totally okay and fine. And he sleeps curled around it while having intense dreams and sweating. So, you know, all good. Intense dreams and sweating. That's a small sacrifice. Uh, then Stephen, you're up. Hi, my name is Stephen. My pronouns are he, him. And I'm playing Nanta, whose pronouns are also he, him. Nanta's an Ewok um, and gets into a lot of trouble running around trying to find the best food and do unconventional things to move uh, the rebellion forward. Delightful. And last but not least, Cody. What's up? It's your boy. Uh, yes, uh, my name's Cody. I use the he, him pronouns. I'm playing Oren, the Jedi he him as well uh the jedi is a reskin of the elf playbook from fellowship um i've recently done a nice little level up and uh yeah he's uh he he's also on the the uh the side of we should destroy that uh evil triangle box and you shouldn't hold it next to your heart darren because that's dangerous uh but what will his his apprentice do you know he can't really control him he's royalty what are you gonna do with these kids uh yeah and he's uh he's ready to to get to dathomir and put the next the next step against zinge so true we pick up with the sound of <clears throat> this may be a first i'm sure it exists in one of the expanded universe novels that are no longer considered canon but are part of legends lore of star wars but i think it's a first for for star wars as it's officially called as we hear space country music uh delivered by an extremely deep heavy bass voice uh, we're in a dim and dingy cantina we see in the bottom right hand corner uh bit of text that starts off in Arabesh and then they do a cool CGI like flip and it says the Rancor Pit Dathomir and uh, there's a camera pan across we see a Dejeric table uh, sitting at the Dejeric table is a Zabrak uh, he is currently um, playing against uh, E631, a droid that uh, clever folks might recognize. They look it up on, like, they're watching on Prime Video, and they look on the left-hand side. It's listed as an assassin droid. I don't know. What does that even mean? Uh, oh, hmm, maybe? Yeah, okay, sorry. There's a, there's a Cody, like, possible country music in Obi-Wan. Uh, that now I have to go back and rewatch that scene because it was one of the most shocking scenes of Obi Wan. <laughs> you see that flag? Oh my lord! Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So you see Droid playing a Zabrak in some Dejeric. That is space chess or space checkers. Um, there is a Donji warrior. It's a red skin species wearing uh almost looks like a hijab, uh, but she has a very nice looking battle rifle that is uh, in pristine condition. And uh, then we see this large, I will say the species is called a herglick. They are whale men because we have lizard men. We have aqualish who are walrus men we, in here. We have the Whalemen. I've never seen a Herglick in live action, but we've seen creatures that are about the size of Herglicks. Uh, this guy is gigantic, and he has uh, three-fingered hand. I guess, yeah, three fingers that come forward and a thumb. So I guess he's got a four-fingered hand. We just can't quite see the thumb in the picture that we have chosen for this Herglick. Holding a microphone. The microphone looks tiny. In his hands looks like a little toy's. Uh, a little kid's toy, uh, but he is warbling into the mic, singing 
uh, songs. What was the uh, Cody? You mentioned like a little bit of a lyric, something about losing his speeder bike. Yeah, or... it, you know, he he uh, he he left his speeder running, and the troopers they were gunning. He let his blaster shoot, 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 and his buddy got away with the loot. That's amazing. That's it. We're stopping the game. We're just gonna have Cody like Filk, a bunch of Star Wars country, and we're done. Uh, but yes, the Herglick, uh, Umjing Bob B A A B. But I guess people can call him Bob. I don't know. We'll see how you uh, how you navigate that. And uh, we also see a woman who is uh, seated at the bar at, at a stool at the bar. She doesn't work at the bar. She's chatting with a chiss behind the bar, a chiss, the blue skinned aliens uh, who come from an extremely cold planet. They are known as cold themselves. Uh, and there's also a beautiful Zeltron. Zeltron, curious if maybe the, you know, pink skin, maybe they're somewhat related to the, the Vorlons. Did I do it right? I'm, I'm so bad with that part. No, it's Vorens. Vorens! <laughs> it's Vorlon. It's stuck in my head because of Babylon 5. That's my own deal. I have to deal with that. I've got to, I got to move on anyway. So thank you for writing that in. Uh, I think you spelled it wrong though. Ooh, is it an O in? Is it O N S? Uh it's V U A R A N S. Voran. Wow. Okay. I'm just gonna say that that's wrong. Even though it's your thing and you can't no, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm gonna add a stem to that zero. And now it's an A. <laughs> Sweet. I am curious as the camera continues to show us the Rancor pit. Who enters the cantina? We're just going to basically have you guys enter. Then we're going to pull back and talk about the rebellion moves. But I want to kind of set this. Maybe it happens in fiction in the Rancor Pit. Maybe we take it out of active narrative to talk more mechanically. But uh, who does the camera catch entering this place? Uh, I think it's two characters. And I'm curious who wants to be the dramatic enter. Or the dramatic entrance, is what I meant to say. <laughs> I'll go in. If no one wants to, I'll go in. Yeah, then I'll go in with Darren. Nice. Yep. Cool. Are you guys loaded for bear or trying to look like just regular citizens? I come in and I look you know, I think I've got stuff slinging across my back and everything. I come in and I look fierce. But, of course, I'm an Ewok, so I look super cute wearing this stuff. And people are like, oh, that's sweet. Like, you'd see, it's sort of like whenever you see a dog in the park and, you know, they're wearing something like a costume that looks like it needs a crossbow. You're like, what? oh, look at that. Yeah. I think Darren doesn't look loaded to bear. I mean, he's got his sword on his side. But he is not you know, seamlessly does not look like he is there for a uh, battle or anything like that. Nice. Nice. Is he dressed fancy or did he dress down for this? Um, he's dressed fancy. Nice. You definitely look out of place here. <laughs> you look like a mark. Some people may think to themselves as they look at you. A little bit of conversation. Uh, and also, as the a lot of you enter Nanta, you're the right height to see that there is a large, ownery loaf cat uh, that that seems unhappy at your entrance. Where is Zop? In I like the, the idea that Darren and Nanta arrive, and there's this moment of everyone like. Hey, these two are marks. Like they're gonna be buying the drinks for the rest of us, and then Zop just shows up behind them, completely kitted out, <laughs> ready to rock and roll. And everyone goes, Oh, never mind. Oh, nice. So you're very protective. <laughs> I love that. 
And then what about Oron? Is he already there? Does he enter after the others? What do you think, Cody? Um, I think I think Oren's already there. I think he he's at a table really taking in this music. He's loving it. Um, there's something about it that really, you know, speaks to his sad soul. And uh, he, he's he's, you know, in the corner. He's got his cloak pulled up knee, you know, legs crossed and at the table. He's doing his full he's doing the full strider um, and he's waiting for his allies to, to get here. Lovely. Lovely. And I guess he has a hood on to, to hide that he's a Jedi. That's all we need, right? Is the... It's all you need. His identity, nobody knows. Hood TM. Awesome. So yeah, the group, the lot of you enter the Rancor pit. Um, Darren draws a lot of interest. And then we pull back to talk about the Rebellion. So the Rebellion... Uh, actually has mechanics attached to it with some moves. Things you can spend to gather information. You already know a bit about Dathomir because of Darren's abilities and uh, connections. Do not all uh, fellowships have uh, abilities and moves like this? Uh, what do you mean? The, so we're, we're using the Rebellion uh, mm -hmm. Fellowship? book do not do do other ones not have those like forces Correct. that is unique. Oh, interesting that cool. is unique to book three which is the rebellion book so let's talk about it what are you interested in uh obtaining with your forces and in intel so i think we need to spend intel because it's as it's at its max. Um, mm -hmm. Are there things left for us to learn about Dathomir? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, source of power is one of the things that's listed, or a leader or general where they're going. But it sounds like we have location information already. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't certain. You know, is that I'm not sure what the terms are and what they relate what they relate to. Very good point. So let me take a look. We should have the... All right, the Rebellion. Uh, if you take a look at the Rebellion sheet, there is a list of all the things that can be purchased. Let's jump to it. Uh, Could we move the Empire and the Rebellion tabs next to each other? Would that be what? usable, doable? Or is that, you know, do we not want to do that? Why would we not want to do it? Let's do it. Sounds great. Um, they are now done. Your hero. I I was talking about uh, discover like under Intel. There's discover where a source of power is located. Yeah. So you know that there is. You know. Ah, yeah. Discover where a source of power is located. It's definitely a thing that you can do. Because if we look at the Empire tab, I, you know the weakness. You know that they have an elite outpost. Hmm. Um, but yeah, you you need to know where that is, and I think that would be a perfect excuse for why you're at the Rancor Pit. Um, not to just take things over. A, another option is the one above, which is discover where a leader or general is going next. So, hmm. I think those are both really good to find out, you know, where the source of power is, possibly what it is, or, you know, um, where. Yeah. is going to be i was going to say i was going to suggest uh potentially right we know that dathomir's weakness is sieges right that's the the thing it's, they have a short a supply shortage so if we're gonna if we're gonna beat them we're gonna do it by enforcing a siege so do we want to find out where their leader is going to be next and is that a place where he's within the siege or do we want him separate from the siege i don't think we want him separate because then he could break it right we want to make sure all of their forces are localized into one spot. So finding out some intel on, hey, when are they going to be here so that we can deploy forces and our droid dropship, uh, our gunship uh, to, to, to lay siege so that we can then uh, take care of it. The other thing I was going to suggest separately from Dathomir entirely is perhaps, you know, we're here now. Now it's time to send some, use some intelligence to start looking into Zygeria as we get ready to enact the the, the siege. Um, that's what I'm imagining as Cody, the player, not necessarily as Oron. 
Okay. Interesting. I would suggest that uh, I had the same thought about looking forward to Zygeria, but that's, you know, a few sessions away and we could set things up narratively, but I think the action should be here with the current session, what we're doing. Right. So I think, it. yeah. And it sounded like you liked the idea of where the leader or general was going to be so we could help angle the siege mechanics that way. Yeah, I think so. I think that would be good. What do you think, Darren and Zop? Uh, I'm good with, with sort of cornering the leader or general. Uh, I just want to earmark that at some point we probably need to learn the latest master plan of the Empire. Zinj is a shifty, Ooh, shifty bastard. Yeah. But, right, right. Yes, those are some solid points. But I think right now we need to deal with Terran Malcos. But um, yeah, no, I'm good with I'm good with finding out where the leader is going. We've got a freaking flying siege tank. Okay, we're gonna siege tank, siege tank. Um, you guys have a siege tank, and you have uh, a droid gunship, right? Or um, this, it the is same the same thing. thing. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. same thing. Droid yes. gunship is the siege tank. Mm -hmm. We could potentially do both of those, Greg. We have enough intel. Uh, I don't want to burn so much intel that we can't use it. A little flexibility. It it seems like now's a good time because in order to spend it, you have to be at the base of operations. And that seems to be in between locations. Yes. That ah, is true. Okay. Otherwise, it's it costs an extra point of intel. So if we burn Ooh. it all and then build it back up, I think we'd be good. Yeah. Okay. I'm How do we build too. it back up? Uh, you gain intel by recruiting folks is one quick way to get it. Yeah. Yeah, recruiting, you capturing. Bring, yeah, when we capture, bring plans or info into the rebellion. Okay. Got it. Okay. So we just need to, you know what we really need? And I'm surprised we don't have it. We don't have an astromech droid to jack into every, you know, circular input that we could get all of their data. Oh, we have, what are we doing? We have R0. R0 can do it. All right, Nanta. If you think he can. I've yet to see him display these skills. I but have I an earworm I, I that like can you. jack into any human brain. <laughs> <laughs> Organic brain. <laughs> well, that's a nightmare. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Droids can be lied to. <laughs> Little Falkeen can't. <laughs> All right, so we're burning both. Little Falkeen doing... can lie to you. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. we're discovering where Leader General is going next and learning the latest master plan the Empire or Overlord has implemented and what the next step of that plan is. And we can do that in the Rancor Pit. Oh, oh no. What have I done? Oh, actually, we need to be at the base, so this should be a flashback. Uh, It could be a... I think you can initiate it and then we can carry the fiction forward that like, oh, you've made contact. There's a oh, person perfect. to speak to at the Rancor pit who will give you that. And then you don't have to oh, make yeah. a roll to obtain it. You just need to go there and get the thing. Does that work for everybody? Mm -hmm. It does. And to be clear, we are um, going with learning the latest master plan. No. What were the two that you... Mm -hmm. Learn latest the latest master, master plan. plan of the Empire okay, uh, and what the next step of that plan is, and then discover where a leader or general, this one being Terry Malkos, is going. Out of character, what is shock boxing? Oh, sorry. Oh, great question. It's actually seen in, the, in, in Mandalorian, which is amazing. So it's boxing, but you've got these like electric gauntlets and you're tethered to the other person as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's nasty. It's very, very brutal. Is Darren about to enter a shock boxing competition? I think that that is the thing. I think there are two things in here that spark Darren's interest. <laughs> shock what boxing is... is definitely one of them. What's the other? A really pretty man in a really cool outfit. He is very pretty. Cool. All right. Uh, then let's pick up with your arrival again. We, we're basically circling back to your arrival on the scene. And I am trying to find a thing. 
Ah, uh, okay. I was unable to find a picture that I was trying to save, but I got it now. Good deal. Okay. So, uh, we drop back in, and a lot of you arrive, all but Oron. Oron, who is already here, enjoying the music, but also a, a person who can blend in more easily than others in your crew. And your contact, the person that you need to speak with to find information about the Malikos, the leader here, is none other than the owner of this club, Wisher, a Chiss. Uh, she is behind the bar chatting with a Kiana clone, uh, Zop. You've run into Kiana's before, if I remember correctly. I think so. Yeah. At least, yeah, maybe not it specifically, but Zop has been around the galaxy. He knows a Kiana clone. He knows a Kiana clone. So, uh, Kate, the, the Star Wars universe, there are clones, but there's only one model of the clone that we are, have seen in the Star Wars world. Hmm? world but Kiana's... Universe? is a Star Wars Saturday clone that there's okay. several of. Exactly. So that is a, a insert uh, because it seems weird that they would only have one version and why not have a a, a female-oriented clone? So that is what yes. Kiana is. That was actually a player entry and I thought it was a great idea. So I've very happily adopted it and used it a, a number of times. Lots of Kianas in the world. Sounds Cool. Uh, yeah, so Darren, you see the shock boxing, uh, you catch the lovely Morgan Stardust, the Zeltron, who is, I don't think he's like dancing on a stage, he's just dancing between tables, checking on folks, chatting. Um, and I'm curious, do you, do you haven't? How much does Darren know about Zeltrons? Probably very little, unless he's run into any in the Rebellion. Okay. I don't imagine. Yeah. He does know much. That's great. So he makes his way to you. Well, hello there. Hi. Hello. Um, yes. Hello. Like How can I help you? Welcome to the Rancor Pit. My name is Morgan. Morgan Stardust. Darren. Ah, that's my, I'm, I'm Darren. Uh, uh, my friends and I are new to town. Uh, we've never been to Dathomir before, and so we were looking for a good time and heard that this is the place for both sport and entertainment and a drink and adventure and entertainment. <laughs> he loves this list. It's like he keeps stringing them on, Darren. Uh, so normally you go gold when you get upset. So Do it's... It's yeah. strong emotions. I don't think okay, we have so strong emotions. Better in okay, time. cool. Uh, like anything that's not like calm, but yeah, I think it's almost like he's blushing, but it's it's gold. Nice. Uh, Morgan reaches out, cups your cheek, traces his fingers over the gold blush. Oh, don't you have a lovely pallor? Ah. Uh. Yeah, it's native to my people, though they don't show it much. Why not? I think it looks wonderful. It makes you look regal. Uh, we follow a... <laughs> so, 
Oh, you poor baby. Um, we follow a a path called the stillness, which requires a uh, typically a, a calmness of mind and s stableness of emotions. Hmm. That sounds so boring. Go and dance with me, Darren. Okay. Wait, he did say Darren, right? I just want to make sure. Yeah, he, he did. He did. Like... He did say okay, Darren. Okay. He didn't give. The, he didn't give the Von Vorlock, which he almost did, but then he's like, "Wait, no." I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, disguise in my like totally dope cape and really nice regal looking clothes, Bef Darren. Before yeah. you you go off dancing with the the, I was about to say Warren. No, <laughs> with the uh with the pretty Zeltron, Zap will grab your arm. Don't go far. Sure, yeah, we're just we're just gonna go. Where where are we going? Don't go far. What is what is the radius of far? And my... The no secondary locations is <laughs> the sop is trying to get to. Oh, yeah, no, we're just gonna, <laughs> gonna go where uh, is there like a dance floor or something? Sure. Yeah, there's a dance floor. And yeah, I think we're just we're just going over there, floor. right? And you're like I think he's like looped his arm and yours. He's surprisingly strong, but he's not manhandling as much as tugging insistently. Yeah, and 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 we sort of like get like this view of like Darren kind of like hopping on one foot as he's like a little. He's like getting tugged in the direction and not really fighting it, but he's letting himself. He's like, yeah, no, no, like he he gets the idea. No, you know, we're just gonna go over there where you can see me. This is like an eighteen year old in a club for the first time. Like he's never been to a place like this. They don't have this where he's from. I don't imagine that sad country music is super danceable, but maybe for close. Uh, you'd absolutely be surprised, Rich. Sad country music, people <laughs> dance real slow, real close. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Uh, Morgan is, is well aware of great ways to dance, to dance close to space country music. And uh, he has ensnared you, Darren. Now, so for K, the yes. Zeltrons are folks who have the ability to emit pheromones oh. that um have slight like they can increase your attraction to someone. Morgan happens to not necessarily need that all the time, uh, since Morgan is smoking hot, and uh, so I think there is a light bit of pheromone influence here but you are in no way his slave like you don't have to roll dice to deny oh him yeah no so i think sure clear. darren is 18 and people i don't want to say they're like trad in voron you know what i mean like but at the same time like this is a very revealing outfit in a club and Darren's caught between I want to wear this, but I'm also really attracted to the person in it, <laughs> like like a whole new world kind of thing. Like it's almost like again like that whole like Rome Spring vibe. Like whoa, nice. <laughs> so oh. he's yeah no he is Morgan's very hot. Uh, the pheromones probably smell great, which makes it even better. Uh, but pheromones or not, he was kind of again an 18 year old who has not been allowed to socialize with many other people. Like this. So oh, because trouble happens. Um yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Weird. why would they even think that trouble would happen? Exactly. Cool. So uh yes, he's very charming. He keeps things very light, like fun. It's it's very, hey, let's party, let's have a good time together. He's not also super conversational, right? Because you guys are dancing and, and that speaks volumes. Oran, you saw the group enter, you saw the Zeltron, like, you could see folks paying attention to Darren and Morgan sweeps in, which could be, uh, could be a very good thing in that the more dangerous folks evidently don't want to tussle with the Zeltron and are letting this happen. Yeah, uh, Oran, you know, hey, we're here for business. Darren is getting distracted as Darren's going to get. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's also drawing eyes elsewhere. So he's happy to allow this. I think Oran's going to um, 
observe this what's the what's the fictional word for look closely look closely i'm going to examine itself. yeah oh i guess i just say i'm looking closely uh i'm letting you know i know zop's going to to speak with the the contact i want to make sure darren doesn't get hurt but i also want to make sure that the the this this cantina is safer than i think it is uh uh-huh. so i'm gonna look closely i would love to see you look closely my friend please roll some dice and tell us how things come out because all right i'm rolling plus sense which for me is a plus three, <laughs> not too shabby. And I get a 12. <laughs> Tell me all of your secrets, Rich. There is nothing to hide from me. Wow, that <laughs> is quite impressive. <clears throat> okay. So I get to ask three questions from the list mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. as well as I believe when I look closely, I trigger another thing. Oh no, that's something else. All right, so I'm going to say, uh, is something hidden or out of place? If so, what looks suspicious? Ooh, interesting. What looks suspicious? Do you... Your eyes tell this to you, but you do not feel it through the force as much. Hmm. But you notice all the people paying attention to Darren, except for that droid playing the Jarek. It turns his head, and of course, I'm imagining like owl. You're like an owl. It like turns his head all the way around without moving his shoulders. And when it clocks Zop, you see its eyes shift from the pale yellow to like a crimson for a moment, and then they shift back to yellow, and its head returns to a normal place. Um, and it, um throws the degeneric game it basically just like moves itself into an incredibly vulnerable position and the zabrak who he is playing Fred sliss uh takes over and wins and chuckles and the the droid throws a few credits uh on the table to pay the wager and slides out and what looks suspicious yeah this droid has a rifle that it is sliding together surreptitiously and moving, trying to move in position and is only, it only has eyes for Zop. Okay. All right. Wow. Um, I will then say, uh, what will happen if I uh, ignore Darren and focus on this threat? If you ignore Darren... Morgan will pickpocket Darren. All right. It's a good life but lesson. Also, I that. But also, no one else is going to mess with Darren while Morgan is around Darren. Cool. Uh, my third question is going to be, uh, da, 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 da. tell me about Bob. Oh, tell man. me about Bob. What are they doing? What will they do next? What are they doing? What will they do next? Bob is Umjing Bob, the Herglick, the the titanically large Herglick lead singer of um, Umjig Bob and his swinging trio. Um, I think he's your contact in the rebellion. He's the one who recommended speaking to Wisher to gather intel. Wisher is not beholden to the rebellion or the idea of the rebellion. She's out to make a quick credit. But Umjing is hoping that you guys can free this place. Perhaps. I knew. I knew Bob was was on the level. He's so great. Honestly, Orange is like, yeah, he's he's awesome. Uh, Okay. I I would like... um, to head towards the droid that I see surreptitiously kind of putting together this rifle. And I would like to um, accidentally run into it and knock its parts. Not, you know, it's assembling this rifle. I want to kind of tumble into it uh, and make a bit of a a kerfuffle. Um, Sounds like you want to act as a distraction and buy some time. Oh yeah. Is that what is, is that the specific? Are you keeping them busy? I'm keeping them busy. Absolutely. Yep. That sounds delightful. All right, rolling with courage, which is zero. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I uh, well, let me roll first, I guess. <laughs> Let's see how well I do. 
seven. seven. All right, a seven. I buy some time, and their attention is on on you for now. Yep. So, uh, Oron, you know, he sees what's happening. He puts his drink down. Uh, he walks towards the droid, but is aware that he's looking elsewhere. He's actively looking elsewhere as he's walking towards it. And then he kind of trips and stumbles. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't see you there. Oh, uh, what is this? Oh, I'm sorry. I knocked all of your pieces everywhere. Is this your hardware? I, I didn't mean to, to break your arm. Uh, the, uh, uh, uh stupid human. And, uh, it's going to try to like nudge you out of the way to, Drop down to its knees. No, of course. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. I must uh, let me buy you a, a oil bath. And it looks over there, and and then it, it leans in to whisper. You must be very careful, human. There's a dangerous exile from the bounty hunter guild here. Very dangerous. I'm gonna lean close to the droid, and I say. You must be careful, droid. There's a Jedi with a bounty on him here. And I'm going to ignite my lightsaber in his chest. Oh, snap! Oh, snap! I think that just happens. That just happens. Yeah. Yeah, that's sweet. That's going to tilt this situation. Great. Zop and Nanta, the two of you were headed up to the bar to engage with... Uh, with Wisher, the owner of the Rancor Pit, if I recall. Correct? Uh, yeah, yep. I think that was the plan. Uh, Plans change. Plans, Plans change. Life. You know, we we sit down at the bar. The Zop lowers the stool for Nanta and then lifts it back up. So the Nanta's at the bar level. I think Nanta, you know, says, "Hey, I need," you know, asks for a sampler, right? And gets all the like little appetizers and starts tasting the different things. And being like, you know, oh, this one's bad, and you know, eats one of them. Yeah, is is he the kind that like flings out bits of the appetizer that are not good? I love that. I think it's actually like picks up the bowl and throws it, and it lands on the dance floor, and somebody slips on it a little bit, and then puts it back down and kind of pounds it like I want more. Yeah. Uh. Wisher slides across. She's the one who handed you the appetizer. She did a, a thing like just a moment to the Kiana clone to come over. Does she know Zop you're here to meet with her? Like, did you, I'm the Rodian that's going to roll in here or do you need to introduce yourself? No. So we we, we have a, a a sign built and I'm just trying to remember. Hold on. This is very important for no particular reason. Uh. So Zop orders a drink um and gets it and pulls like takes the garnish off the drink and puts uh, a Rodian Pula blossom back in it. That's the sign that I'm the contact from the rebellion. A hula blossom? That's great. It's it's also the Tenwa clan symbol, but yeah, puts it back in the drink. And hands that puts the garnish on, on one of Nanta's appetizers. Good. Ah. Good. Good. Um, and I think this happens just before the lightsaber bit. She she Yeah, she presses a button underneath the bar reaches a hand up and a little robotic bartender activates and skims along to come over and start serving drinks and brings a new meal to Nanta and she says come with me please and she slides around and looks like she's going to a back room what do you do Nanta, do you, will you follow me or do I go alone? Um, I think Nanta basically hops on the the waiter robot, you know, the droid, and is going to follow you wherever you go. <laughs> but bringing the food with you, yeah. <laughs> wow, just riding the oh wow, okay, sure, sure. 
Uh, so the two of you disappear just as Oron destroys the poor droid. Uh, yeah, laser swords it, and it falls to the ground. Some people reach for blasters. Uh, Oron, how do you play this off? Because it's not like anyone's rising up to defend that droid. Sure. But they are, oh, is stuff about to go down? No, I think I um I think I deactivate my saber just as soon as it, you know, pierces through the the droid's uh chassis. And I and then I just put it to my side and hold my hands up and I say, the droid was was pulling a gun. You can see here the it was building a blaster. I, I didn't want anybody to get hurt. Ooh, nice. I think that sounds like you are uh Oh, I don't think there is a could I do something having heard that, I think? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think I think sort of somewhat simply, uh, this is, yes, my liege, people here seem to have uh, assumed I am wealthy and powerful, which is true, so to an extent. Uh, so I think it's uh, just, when you issue a command to someone below your rank, they'll do it immediately, no questions asked. And so I think, you know, we hear Oron say that, and Darren will just look up and say, then the man kept the party going. Why should we let this little bit stop it now yeah i think with that yeah it, it, these are not your subjects but it's enough for people to not resort to further hostilities there is the that woman the red skin woman with the wearing the hijab she is going to like make her way to you, Oron. She has that blaster rifle out. She hasn't aimed it at you. She just kind of marches over and kicks at the droid a little bit. He speaks truth. What is that weapon that you carry? It is a... Well, let me be honest. It is a, an extension of myself, a blade of plasma, of light, of hope, and justice. Who am I speaking with? You may call me Swana. Swana, so good to meet you. I am Oren. And I see you have your weapon ready to defend this place as well. And I, I appreciate that, that it is good to see others willing to step up when someone would do violence um, to maybe not innocent, but to the unexpected. She's glancing around for a wisher. She's very unsure about the, I have a weapon made of hope and justice. Uh, if it make you feel better, I can step outside. I mean, no further trouble. Okay, you had a question. I was, I was saying, how loud is this conversation? Uh, I think that there was like a hitch in Umjing's song at the first moment, but now he's continued singing. So you could potentially dance near. You did step in, right? You you yeah. declared yourself, and you can probably overhear a bit of this. You're, you're likely paying attention, and Morgan would not stop you from from that. Okay. No, I think I think you know Oron seems to have it handled. Just, Just don't don't laser sword anyone else. You have my word. I won't laser sword anybody else who doesn't deserve it. She narrows her eyes at the qualifier. <laughs> I raise my eyebrow. She'll march back over to her normal little bit and sit on a stool and watch people. Um, do they have someone who would clean? Yeah, they have to have a couple of servers so someone will come over and start taking at the droid parts to carry it away. Wisher, um, the back room, you can see that there are a few display panels. There seem to be some cameras that have been secreted within 
parts of this area. It also shows that there are a couple of rooms you haven't seen um, on the display panels. And Wisher sits on a chair and leans an elbow against it. I'm curious, you are part of the rebellion. What is your plan here? Are you going to start some kind of protracted battle that's going to cost me credits? Or are you surgical? Please tell me you're surgical. We're here to end, a, end the reign of Terran Malchus. The means by which we do that are not to be discussed. Malakos has a number of night brothers, an entire clan. They're his special little mercenary band. The stormtroopers, we have that handled. But the night brothers are only loyal to him and don't seem to care about credits. Hmm. Understood. They are delving deep into the ground here at Dathomir. Malakos is extracting a poison. What kind of poison? When the Night Sisters were killed many years ago, they cursed the land. Their bodies are sometimes summoned to defend Dathomir. But there are places deep within the earth they have kept hidden. It is there that Malakos has the Night Brothers extracting this poison. Was Malakos with them? Yes, that is where you can find him. Zop pulls up a data pad and does the whole hollow map thing. Spins it. Where is this mine? She will point out where it is. She says, you must be extremely careful. There are a number of families of Rancor there. Uh, and this might be a role. Are there any other activity in that area? Ships coming or going? And then uh, Zop will pull up the uh, the, the signature of Chevelle's ship. Perhaps this nice. one. Nice, nice. I think. Um... <laughs> she seems a little hesitant when you bring Chevelle into this. You're going to need to talk some sense to her for her to roll on Matron Chevelle. Mm. Like, that could be your answer. Just the hesitation. The hesitation, yeah. Oh, uh, let me look real quick for the options there. Uh, you know, as much as the wisdom, sense, and grace. I mean, I should do grace, but I'm not really talking around it. So I'm going to appeal to their emotions or desires. I know you care about this planet. You wouldn't have a bar here. If you didn't. And I know you want to keep your business tight and tidy. So I'm going to need this information so that I can keep it, as you said, surgical. And it's not exactly a threat, but it. Zop puts his hand on his knife at that point. <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to step up. I'm going to take your hand off your knife, and I'm going to say. You have to understand that there are mutual benefits here. 
um, if we succeed, then we can make sure you know what's happening. And with that amount of information, it helps you come out on top. And maybe you won't be running a cantina. Maybe you'll be running a city or a province. And that can be very beneficial. Um, we are we know exactly what we're doing here. You know, I see you have recording devices here. Um, and you have all of this stored on media. And our master thief has also taken a copy of this. So we both know exactly what's going on and, you know, how it will be recorded. Um, I think I'm helping Zop. Sounds how like do it, I do yeah. that? Do I spend a bond? Uh, great question. So I think that is actually in game reference. Let me double check. No. <clears throat> oh, we went through this before and I didn't memorize it. Uh, but so I think... when two or more players have bonds with each other and work side by side, they roll hope. Okay, that's it. Uh, when one just, of them must pay with the it. price, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, but there's also bounded service when you call upon a companion for help. So if I asked you, then you can. Yeah, it's confusing. Okay, so I'll roll with hope. I'm still rolling flat, I believe, because it's wisdom. So here we go. That's a nine. A nine is pretty good. When you talk sense, on a seven plus they do as you speak to the best of their ability. On a nine plus nine minus. By the way, just a brief aside. I do yeah. not like the way that the move results are written in fellowship. It's, it's a little very tricky. Yeah. Yeah. It it it's like obfuscates the meaning in ways that I don't think were intended. At least they are consistently worded that way, so maybe I will get it at some point. And once it clicks, I get in... what they're going for, but it's yeah, it's tricky. Um, I owe them a favor. Mm -hmm. Matron Chevales a reveal poison. It's even existence to Malakos. I think she's trying to get it out of our planet. Out. As if this is my home. I'm not saying that the poison shouldn't be extracted, but I don't think you'll like what they want to do with it, whatever that might be. And what is that? Or do you even know? I don't. I've avoided those questions. But I don't think it has anything to do with Dathomir. And I don't think a warlord Zinj wants to use poison against his own people. Which means there's only one target left. Logically. Ananta gets up, steps across the table, and walks right up to her, and puts out his hand and says, there's more than one target. We know the Empire doesn't just attack the Rebellion. They attack the people in the places that they want. And says it could be you too. It could be. But you're going to stop them, so I needn't worry, right? Yes, and perhaps we should talk about how you're going to deal with the stormtroopers. I believe you're going to deal with the stormtroopers. I believe you said you had them in hand. I have them in hand with bribes. Once you tilt the situation, that will no longer be an option for me. But if you were to 
have some help, then it could be an option for you, correct? Zop, Zop leans over the console. We're get, all getting very close up in Wish's business, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and keys over to one of the cameras that's watching the dance floor. We could promise them all kinds of bribes. Indicating Darren. Darren's got money to burn. Darren has money to burn. <laughs> yes. That is pretty great. Let's go back to Darren. Uh, there's some question happening in the chat about uh, do we feel that Darren's getting taken here or do you have an opportunity? And there's a mention of keen senses. So if you wanted to call upon your keen senses, do you have keen senses or does someone else have keen senses? So I got, um, I recently got a, a some Jedi training on the ship, Q montage real quick. Uh, and I got, you know, just saw, like, I was talking, like, why aren't you teaching me how to fight? That's important. No, you must not your senses. Uh, and I got the uh, elder ability slash Jedi ability, keen senses, ask a single question about your surroundings and immediately receive a truthful answer. Well, feel free to ask that question. <laughs> yeah. So I think, yeah. Uh, can there, like, yeah. How do I, I don't know how to phrase this in a question. Um, yeah, I guess it's just like, what is this guy up to? Like, is he just enjoying this? Sure. Is this the you know, same time or is? You have this nagging feeling, Darren amid all the fun and enjoyment that he had, he Morgan is you catch a subtle movement near where one would assume you keep your credits, a, a coin purse of some kind or a pocket and as much as you want to enjoy this dance partner, you realize he wants a bit of what you have. Yeah. And I think as soon as that hand goes there, another hand, Darren's hand sort of lifts it back to somewhere else. And he, you know, sort of does a little, uh, a dip, you know, of a dance move, probably a little too rounded out for this kind of dancing. And Darren just continues to smile and we'll lean in a little closer and say, while I am very much enjoying the feel of your hands on my body, I think you and I both know that its placement there was unwarranted. Now, if you want payment for your time, my ego might be a bit bruised that it wasn't just my golden complexion you were enjoying, but I would not deny you your support if you need it but I don't appreciate someone trying to take advantage of me. He smiles. He's not going to get upset at that and dances away for a little bit and laughs it off and uh, will attempt to continue to entrance and distract you. Uh, he does not immediately make a pitch for getting some credits from you at this point, but will perhaps look for a different opportunity and just laugh it off. Not lying, but not answering directly. But he is a good dancer. Yeah. Yeah, and I think Darren, Darren is like, I've made my point clear. I, I can catch your hands, I'm aware. And so he keeps dancing and, you know, he'll, he'll throw out. Uh, I noticed there is also sports gamesmanship here as he looks towards the shock boxing. You can make a bet on me. I'd win for you. You. <laughs> Eddie's face, sorry. <laughs> Just like a, well, you, you understand that's extremely dangerous. It's just boxing, right? It's some physical camaraderie. Looks like there's gloves. Yes, of course. Uh, you get the feeling he may not be betting on you <laughs> yeah no that's yeah listen if he wants to lose his money that's on him i know he may he may not realize exactly the trouble that he's asking for but he will 
Yeah, I think he will move over to Sawana, the Donji warrior, and say, someone wants to fight. Her eyes widen for a second, and he looks to you, and her eyes narrow. But she reaches and pulls a little comm unit out from her belt, and makes a call. Time to fight. And, uh, yeah. So we will see how that goes. Uh, so, Zop and Nanta, is there anything more you wanted from your conversation with Wisher? Yeah. Um, I would like to try to convince Wisher to help us with the Stormtroopers. Um, I think this would be an overcome. I think so. Um, like to see and it. potentially oh okay i have an idea okay so i think this is going to be an overcome um and i also think this might be recruiting her into the fellowship Ooh, i was hoping that's where we were going that's great yeah. so and i think i've been talking out my ass i've been lying a lot i think under talk sense that's trick them so I'm going to use grace because I'm not being wise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see what that looks like. Uh, that is a 10. Um, which I can stop the obstacle obstacle threat or cut or move from causing harm. Um, I also get to sting like a bee on overcome. Ooh. It's one of the advances I took. And I get to choose two options. So sting like a bee. I'm small. I can ask a question. And I had it figured out. Um, so under speak softly, what do they want and how could we help them get it? Uh, you get to sting and like a bee when you the keep other them thing... busy. I'm sorry? You get to stay like it'd be when you keep you them say, busy. When you use keep them busy, I do, but I do overcome. Oh, there's a oh, there's another. Yeah, game. but I, oh, yeah, sorry, I took a sorry. tough guy that lets me overcome with an ally. Yeah. Wow, Greg, you thought Steven doesn't know the intricacies of his little Ewok moves? I love it when he calls me on mine. So all <laughs> embarrassing. Good. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's good. Um, so under speak softly, I'm going to do what do they want and how can we help them get the get it? And I'm going to take something from Whisper, and I think. This is going to be, as we leave, the thing I'm going to take is like the recording that we discussed at some point. Or I'm going to let Zop know or something like that so that that's what we'll end up taking. Nice. Nice. I like it. Uh, so let's see. You you were asking a question that I need to answer. And that question, give me again. Oh, you read yep. it out so, my poor E631. Dang it. Sorry. So primarily what we're doing is we're basically uh, trying to get her to convince her to help us with the stormtroopers. This might involve us spending some forces in order to make sure that she has backup. I like um, that. If we I can help. That's really good. Yeah, pay the price. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense to me. I'm into yep. it. And the question I had was... Uh, what do they want, and how could we help them get it? What she wants is the ability to run this bar without having to... She doesn't mind paying taxes. She doesn't like having to pay the Empire with all of the things that they take. She wants the freedom to run this place as she sees fit. Does that make the make sense? Does that seem going? Oh out? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that I think that Nanta's like, you know, why stop there? If possible, can you imagine what the if you didn't have to pay the empire, you could have a chain of bars. Who would you put in charge of the others? Yeah, you need to be think thinking in the future. Yeah, yeah that's that's. Opening her eyes to the possibility, and yeah, I like that. Cool. 
Yes. <laughs> hmm. Yes. Interesting. She's working through the permutations of that bit of information, but she is definitely intrigued. So, uh, let's cut back out as the large Trandoshan Dagri tossed uh, comes in and crosses over to slide on the shock boxing gloves and people are moving tables out of the way. Uh, and Morgan Morgan is leading you over and hands you a pair of shock boxing gloves. There are already people betting credits or on it looks like Darren has volunteered to be involved in a shock boxing match. Uh wh what are you doing? Oron's, you know, doing nothing. Zop and Nanta are still speaking with the contact. We need the time. He uh he just he, he, he watches. <laughs> nice. Uh, what are the rules of this endeavor? Is it just fisticuffs? Rules. Oh, this Trandoshan. They're lizard men. Because mm -hmm. Star Wars is very interested in animals as people. Um, anthropomorphism is huge in Star Wars. So the Trandoshan Dagre Tost says the rules are the first to fall. He's the loser. And so just the gloves? They start to electrify and then he kind of slips out the tether and uh, put the tether on. That way you cannot run. When I start to pummel you. So you just know. the gloves. That didn't answer the question. Just the gloves. Uh, he's, are you putting on the gloves? Yeah, he's putting the gloves on. He's like okay, slipping cool. them on. Like, yeah, he yeah. starts to attack you. He's oh, okay. Really not interested in, in no, talking cool. about rules. Fuck that noise then. Uh, that means there are no rules. Uh, that's not good for you, sir. Uh, <laughs> Yay, no rules, fights. Yeah, uh, rolling blood, I assume. Overcome. Um, I think you do. Rolling blood to overcome sounds amazing. You're trying to uh, prevent, well, we need to do avoid redirect or prevent the harm coming, uh, something will cause. Yeah, you don't want to get hurt. That sounds good. What does your fighting style look like, Darren? I think it is ridiculously stupidly graceful and fluid in its movements. It's like watching almost like watching Floyd Mayweather box. Nice. Like it's it's a lot of very like ease of movement. He's he's got a lot of acrobatics to him. Um and a surprising amount of core strength for such like a live form. And nice. so it's it's but there's also like a a raw anger and bloodlust to it that there we go. Yeah. There's a lot of things he has strong emotions about. Such a bad foreign. That's a 12. Amazing. I get a plus three. On a 10 plus, you stop the obstacle threat, cut, or move from causing harm. Yeah. If if I may. Yeah, let's see. I think we watch, is the, is, there's like just like, a surprisingly long period of time of Darren just kind of dodging. Like it's like, and like, he's clearly watching this guy and how he moves. Um, and he, he the guy can't seem to land a single punch. Um, and Darren just, there's like a split second and you see Darren's fist connect right with the guy's solar plexus point and just, knock him down in one punch nice nice he is uh yeah i'm curious let's see yeah. i think you hold advantage over him mm -hmm. um and i'm gonna say like yeah i think you are successful in overcoming 
because it's supposed to be a two step, like right. Yeah, when yeah. You overcome a thing. You can't actually finish them off. And the rules are when you go down. So I think maybe he slams into a table and drops to a knee, but it's close enough to where he hasn't gone down, down. Yeah, uh, yeah. And he rises up and lets... I don't know if he gets the chance to rise up. Okay. I think Darren goes immediately right after. Nice. That is like the raw viciousness there is he does not allow for a breath. An enemy cannot be given a breath. Let's see you finish them. Um, okay. Sorry, looking I just... At that, looking at that move, unless you want to kill Yeah, him. that's what I was just going to ask. I don't <laughs> want to kill this man. Um, Forcing them to retreat. That's, Roll that's, plus courage. Uh, or disabling them or knocking them out. Courage or sense. Hey, Darren. Yeah. If you roll with blood, yeah, you get to roll in. Well, technically, we call it hope because a little something that you've held close will give you guidance and guide your hand. Do I think I would get in trouble for killing here? Or do I think this guy would have killed me? It's hard to tell because it went so fast and he never landed a blow but he definitely planned on hurting you a lot um i just think in the in the situation as it's been defined i don't see how that would be easily revealed yeah that seem fair? no that's no that's fair that's fair i'm 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 asking the questions no i think i'll i'll roll with courage we're not there yet Unless you want to break me something off to convince me, Rich. He wants cool to kill you. He wants... Is it... Darren, like, snaps for a second. He hears that. Is there anything else to it? Oh, did Rich freeze? <laughs> oh, he did. He, oh, did. he did. Oh. He did. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's this is, this is the ace GMing style of Rich. Is he that... wants to kill you and then just disappears? <laughs> he makes you really lean in for it. Has to oh. really lean in for it. That's so good. So good. Oh, come back, Rich. Recording gold. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, Rich. Oh, no. <laughs> good good work. I was just about to do that, Stephen. <laughs> yeah. uh, I kind of want this to have, you know, we've finished the conversation in the back, and Nanta comes out and starts cheering you on. Yeah. yeah. Uh oh. My whole Zoom went weird. Oh, no. I wonder what that will do with this recording. Frozen yeah. for me, I may need to reboot. Ooh, yeah. yeah this was actually him just, uh, he's he's buying time, right? He's buying like, time, yeah. He, you like, asked, like, do I hear anything else? And he's like, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. And then he just, you know, he control alt deleted while he just paused. <laughs> <laughs> I think Nanta comes out from the back room and it's like standing there, like cheering you on, like, yes! Yes, the blood. The blood thrums in his ears. But I'm like, is that the, the holocron or is that Chevelle Sars? Because I couldn't tell I'm if sure. that was his, his Chevelle voice. I'm sure it's the holocron because yeah. it's right there next to you. It's it, Well, it's, yeah, it's just right over his heart. 